bus driver, Daryl. Hi, kids. I'm Conductor Cam. And I am Mrs. C. Welcome to the Crossroads. We are going on an adventure as we read the Bible and take a journey with Jesus. Check it out. our verse as we go to the heavens. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. That's from Revelations 4 verse 8. God is holy. That means he is amazing, awesome, perfect, incredible, supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. Those are all great words, but they only tell us a teeny weeny bit about how amazing God is. As we think about the heavens, listen to our Space Found poem, reflections that people shared after they went to the planetarium. Listen for their responses, as well as scripture all interspersed. Our Space Found poem. Awesome God. O oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Majestic. You have set your glory above the heavens. Ooh, from the lips of children and infants, you have ordained praise. <gasps> In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, colorful lights, and let them be lights in the expanse of the heavens to give light upon the earth. And it was so. Pretty cool. He made the moon to mark the seasons. The sun knows its time for setting. Interesting everything. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished and all the host of them. Awe-inspiring when I consider the heavens, the work of your fingers, how detail-oriented God is. The moon and the stars which you have set in place, humbling. What is man that you are mindful of him, the son of man that you care for him? Moving. By faith, we understand that the universe was created by the word of God. Amazing. So that what is seen was not made out of things that are visible. Majestic. The heavens declare the glory of God and the sky above proclaims his handiwork. Glorious. He sits enthroned above the circle of the earth. He stretches out the heavens like a canopy and spreads them out like a tent to live in. Awesome. And I will show wonders in the heavens above. Oh, interesting. Lift up your eyes and look to the heavens. Who created all these? He who brings out the starry host one by one and calls forth each of them by name. Because of his great power and mighty strength, not one of them is missing. Scary. Thus says the Lord, heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. How small we are. Who made the bear and Orion, the Pleiades and the chambers of the south? By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made and by the breath of his mouth, all their host. Cool. He spreads out the northern skies over empty space. He suspends the earth over nothing. How big God is. I made the earth and created man on it. It was my hands that stretched out the heavens and I commanded all their hosts. Powerful. Do I not fill the heaven and earth, declares the Lord. His handiwork is majestic. O oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Beautiful. For we saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. Great and awesome God. Holy, holy, holy 
is the Lord God Almighty. God is all powerful, holy, and glorious. Now, how can knowing that God is all powerful, holy, and glorious help us choose which way to go when we are facing the thoughts of being reverent towards God versus disrespect? Well, during our time in the heavens, we have learned many different things about God. We have learned that God is glorious. He is light. We have learned that God is all powerful. His enemies flee. We have learned that God is holy. That's why we come to worship him. We have learned that God is all powerful, holy and glorious, and only he can be our forgiveness through Jesus. We have also learned that God is all powerful, holy and glorious, and he conquers sin and death. What a mighty, mighty savior you are. That is why we can choose reverence versus disrespect because God is all powerful, holy and glorious, and he sent Jesus to be our forgiveness. Imagine that growing up, Jesus was one of your close family friends. You got to hear him speak and got to see the miracles he worked. Now imagine that one of your family members has gotten so sick, they only have days to live. This is the scene that we step into for today's lesson. Two sisters, Martha and Mary, call out to Jesus because they have a desperate need. Their brother Lazarus is ill and he only has days to live, so the word is sent out to Jesus. But he doesn't get there in time and Lazarus dies. The sisters had held out hope, but now that their brother is dead, all hope is gone. Or so they thought. In today's lesson, you will get to see one of Jesus' great miracles, the raising of Lazarus from the dead. Our prayer is that God would use this lesson to build hope that just as God raised Lazarus from the dead, so too will God raise all his children to eternal life. Check out the story of Lazarus and how Jesus conquered death and Lazarus rose from the dead. During Jesus' ministry, he did more than just heal people, feed people, and preach to people. He also took time to rest and spend time with friends. Three of his closest friends were Mary, Martha, and Lazarus, two sisters and their brother. Jesus spent time at their home in the village of Bethany, enjoying meals, conversation, and wonderful fellowship. While Jesus was far away with his disciples, he received news that Lazarus had become very ill. Jesus was saddened by this and learned that Mary and Martha were hoping that he would come back and heal Lazarus. Though Jesus loved Lazarus, he decided not to go. Two days later, Jesus still did not go to Lazarus. Then more news came that Lazarus died. Everyone was sad, especially Lazarus's family. Jesus was deeply sad as well. Jesus told the disciples that Lazarus was just asleep. Jesus was trying to explain to them that he was more powerful than death. But the disciples could not understand it. In the end, they went to Lazarus' home. When he finally arrived at the house, Jesus learned that his dear friend Lazarus had been dead for four days. Many friends and family members were there, grieving with the sisters. Mary and Martha were mourning their brother, weeping, and wishing that Jesus had come sooner. If you had been here, my brother wouldn't have died, Martha sobbed when she saw Jesus. Jesus spoke to her tenderly. Your brother will rise again. I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me will not die but live. Jesus, along with the crowds of mourners, went to Lazarus' tomb. When he arrived at the spot, Jesus wept. As the onlookers saw Jesus weeping, they knew that he loved Lazarus deeply. Jesus was sad for Lazarus, but more so, 
He was sad that these people had such small faith. He was going to show them again that with God, anything was possible. So Jesus went and stood in front of the tomb and commanded, Take the stone away. Martha protested, Lord, there will be an odor, for he has been dead four days. Jesus looked at her, Believe, you will see the glory of God. Then Jesus prayed to God and shouted, Lazarus, come out. And then he came. Lazarus, still bound up with his burial attire, came out of the tomb. The crowd reacted in absolute surprise. Jesus had just commanded the dead to come to life. The family was reunited. Lazarus, who had become sick and died, now emerged from the tomb as healthy as any other man. It was true. Jesus is the resurrection and the life. That day, as a result of what Jesus did, many people believed in him. Time to grab your sandals and walk it out!
since God is all-powerful, holy, and glorious, and we are trying to listen to God, we can choose to have reverence for God versus disrespect. Check it out and think about which way are you going to go. Content or covet? God is my rock and God is self-sufficient. Which way are you going to go? Love or selfish? God is my rock and God is loving. Which way are you going to go? Hospitality and compassion versus lonely and indifferent. Gracious and good. Which way are you going to go? Just or fair? God is my rock and God is just. Which way are you going to go? Reverence or disrespect? God is my rock. God is all powerful, holy, and glorious. Which way are you going to go, truth or lie? God is my rock. God is faithful. Which way are you going to go, wisdom or impulse? God is my rock. God is wise. Which way are you going to go, patient or restless? God is my rock. God is God is all-powerful, holy, and glorious. And Jesus is the light that illuminates the truth, gives us life, and leads us towards eternal life. In the little town of Bethany, there lived a man named Lazarus. He had two sisters, Mary and Martha. Martha loved to throw a party. Mary loved to sit and listen. Lazarus loved his two sisters, and they were all friends with a man named Jesus. But one day, Lazarus got sick. He went to bed sick, and he woke up sick. Martha and Mary looked after him, but Lazarus got worse and worse. I know, said Martha. I will tell our friend Jesus. He can help. Martha thought about all Jesus had done. He made the blind people see. He made the deaf people hear. He made people who had never walked jump, run, and leap for joy. He could make Lazarus well. So she and Mary sent a message to Jesus. Lord Jesus, our brother Lazarus, the friend that you love, is sick. Come quickly. It took two days for Martha's message to reach Jesus. And when Jesus heard his friend was very, very sick, he did nothing. Did nothing? That's right. He didn't ride the first donkey to Bethany. He didn't run until his side hurt. For two whole days, he stayed right where he was. Why? Jesus told his disciples, our friend Lazarus is very sick, but this illness won't end with Lazarus being dead. He won't have to say goodbye forever. I have a plan. Phew, Jesus had a plan, but what was it? At last, Jesus and his disciples headed to Bethany. Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, Jesus announced. I'm on my way to wake him up. Did they hear him right? Lazarus was sleeping? Couldn't Mary and Martha wake him up? Jesus knew their questions. He looked at them and said, Lazarus has died. Dead? How could this be? Didn't Jesus say that Lazarus would not die? Didn't he say they wouldn't have to say goodbye forever? 
What happened to his plan? Every step to Bethany felt heavier and heavier. Their hearts sank deeper and deeper. They were sad their friend had died. They didn't even get to say goodbye. Four days after Lazarus had died, Jesus and his disciples finally arrived. Martha came running to meet them. Her face was sad. Her eyes were red. Lord, she gasped, if only you had been here, Lazarus would not have died. But I know nothing is impossible with you, even after someone's died and we've said our forever goodbyes. You're right, Martha, Jesus said. There is a day coming when we will say goodbye to saying goodbyes forever. Do you believe that? Martha nodded. Yes, I believe in you, Jesus. I know you are the Son of God, and I know you always do what you promise. You will end our goodbyes forever. Martha went and fetched Mary. Mary was so sad. The brother she loved was gone. She would never hug him again. She would never eat with him again. She would never see his face again. Jesus saw her tears, and then it happened. His heart broke. He knew what he was about to do. He knew Lazarus's goodbye wasn't forever, but his heart broke for his friends. When they reached Lazarus's tomb, Jesus cried too. They cried and cried and cried because they'd had to say a forever goodbye. But then Jesus stopped crying and said, take away the stone. Martha told him there might be a horrible smell. Jesus said, you need to believe me. So they took away the stone. Then he yelled like a lion's mighty roar, Lazarus, come out. And he did. Jesus kept his word. Lazarus being sick didn't end with him being dead. It ended with him alive even after he died, after they'd had to say goodbye. Mary, Martha, Lazarus, and Jesus were together again. Martha threw a party. Mary laughed and listened. Lazarus was glad to be alive. But then the time came for Jesus to say goodbye. He hugged the friends that he loved and said, goodbye for now, but not forever. Jesus had to go to Jerusalem where he would be the one to say goodbye and die. And then like Lazarus, walk out of a tomb alive. And after that, Jesus said goodbye again because he was going back to heaven. It was sad for Jesus' friends to say goodbye, but they would see him again in the land that lay after their dying, in the land where there are no more goodbyes, not ever. We all have to say goodbye sometimes. Some of them are short goodbyes, some are long, some seem like forever. Jesus knows it is sad to say goodbye. So Jesus came to end goodbyes. One day after we die, Jesus and his friends will say goodbye to goodbyes forever. Sometimes a friend of Jesus who we love gets sick and we're sad. Sometimes because they die, we have to say goodbye, but not forever. Do you believe that? Hey guys, with every crossroad we face, we get to choose if we want God's help or not. We get to choose which way to go. We can remain in God's word and he will help us know what to do every day with everything we face. We can also invite friends on the journey with us so they can know God and join Jesus in heaven for all eternity. I don't want to get to heaven and wish someone was there that I never told about God's love.
the splendor of a king Clothed in majesty Let all the earth rejoice All the earth rejoice He wraps himself in light And darkness tries to hide and trembles at his voice, and trembles at his voice. How Beginning and the end, beginning and the end. The God of free in world. Father, Spirit, Son, Lion and Lamb, Lion and the Lamb. will you choose? Will you choose to follow Jesus? Will you remain in Christ and seek him with all of your heart? Will you invite others to join you on the journey of faith? Come and go with me to my father's house. Come
Choose, remain, invite, and keep seeking God every step of the way. Bye.